In this video, I want to show you the proper way of how to level a bath. Now here's one of my pet subjects, fitting baths. I've been to so many over the years that have been fitted incorrectly and they've moved and allowed water to seep down the back. And we all know what that leads to. So it's very important at this stage that we get it fitted properly and solidly. The first thing obviously is that we need to make sure that it's level and not just level along one plane but obviously level along two planes. Now that's important for a number of reasons. One is that the bath is built with this slight falling from the edge into the bath so that any water that collects along the edge will go back into the bath and if you don't get it level what you sometimes find is you get water pooling around the edge of the shower screen and leaking out there so that's essential that you do that and the next thing i do is to make sure that i've got a good solid timber bearer behind that long edge at the back there to stop any movement and if you do that when you come to put your sealing tape in and your silicon seal you make sure there's no movement there, no stretch on the silicon joint. Then we've got this seal, this no more leak seal that goes all the way around the edge of the bath to give us that belt and braces, that second seal, if you like, around the back edge. So we're gonna make sure that no water can ever leak down the back. Now when it comes to choosing a bath, you can of course fit a standard Abacus acrylic bath, they're all high quality baths, nothing wrong with that. But because this bath is over a shower, people tend to move around in it and I think that that requires something a little bit more and I tend to try and persuade the customer to use this Armour Plus bath, which has got a gel coating around the outside, it starts to give you the kind of rigidity that you get in a cast iron bath, but without the weight. And you'll also notice that there's no overflow. Now the reason for this is that on some jobs you're required to reduce the capacity of the bath for water saving and so on. So they allow you to fit the overflow, position the overflow where you need it. Now if you look at this, this is another innovation from Abacus, a template. So you don't have to be Archimedes, you don't have to work out the capacity of the bath. It's already written on there and you just drill the hole according to where you need that capacity to be. Now just a general point about fitting baths is that I like to fit them on bearers. I know a lot of people don't bother now, they say that the chipboard is now water resistant and you don't really need to worry about the feet dropping through the floor. But I also think that when you fit the bearers it also means you can shorten the legs slightly, it becomes more rigid and you can also screw the feet directly to the bearers and slide it into position. So that's just my preference, I think it makes for a better job. So what I like to do at this stage is to just tosh screw these bearers to the floor, but of course you could be worried about there being cables or pipes below. And if you're not 100% sure that you're not gonna hit anything, the best thing to do is use a bit of good quality adhesive, stick those bearers down. These days that adhesive is so good that that's plenty good enough. So I'm gonna fit the bath to the wall now. In bad old days we used to use brackets, but now I just use this MD adhesive, which is really good, it's waterproof, and quite honestly, a nice thin bead along the back, and once you push that on, and it goes off, that's gonna go nowhere. 